Hello, welcome back to Chemistry, It Is All That Matters, and today we're going to talk about light energy, and we're going to talk about how light energy plays a role in the atomic spectra. So let's take a look at what we have in regards to light energy. So what we're dealing with is light as a quantity of energy, and therefore light is part of the atomic emission spectra. In this case, it's the electromagnetic spectrum. And when we look at the electromagnetic spectrum, we are ranging from radio waves way out at a frequency of 10 to the 6th or a wavelength of 10 to the 3rd or 1,000 meters um, to uh, radio waves, the FM radio waves, to microwave oven waves, to radar waves infrared um, when you're looking at things like night vision goggles and the visible spectrum that we're going to talk about is really small the visible spectrum is right here between infrared and ultraviolet then you have ultraviolet then you have soft x-rays hard x-rays and gamma rays and when you're talking about gamma rays you're talking about a frequency of 10 to the 20th and you're talking about really tiny 10 to the negative 11th as the wavelength so let's talk about what this actually means Now, with the visible spectrum, which is what we're going to primarily worry about because that is what we use when we look at um, flame tests and things like this to determine what elements we're dealing with, we're dealing with the colors of the visible spectrum. And of course, we've all learned the old mnemonic device of Roy G. Biv, or red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, the colors of the rainbow because it is the combination of all white light that creates the colors that we see in our lives. So we are dealing with the visible spectrum and that is the spectrum of waves that our eyes can absorb and we can see. So first of all we have to understand that from our understanding of light, light can be a particle when it acts as a particle, it can be a wave when it acts as a wave. Um, in the case of a wave, it we have to understand what a wave is composed of. So here we have a very simple wave formation. And what we need to talk about is the top of the wave is called the crest, and the bottom of the wave is called the trough. The distance from the middle of the wave to the bottom of the trough, which is also the distance of the middle of the wave to the crest. That is called the amplitude, the amplitude of the wave. And then when we talk about wavelength, which is what we're going to use in measuring the energy of light, we're going to talk about the wavelength, and the wavelength goes from the crest of one wave to the crest of the next wave. And notice as we move that distance, it moves the entire length of the wave it stays consistent and that is what we have to understand that these waves are consistent in their wavelength. The other thing we have to understand about a wave is a wave has a frequency which is the time at which the wave passes a certain point. So a low frequency wave would be less waves in a given period of time while a high frequency wave would be there would be more waves in a given period of time. So when we were looking at the radio waves, the radio waves, AM radio especially, but then even FM radio, those are low frequency. They are long drawn out waves, great distances, great wavelengths, and low frequency. But when we talk about uh, high frequency rays, uh, waves like uh, gamma rays and x-rays. These are high frequency, which means more waves are going to strike a given point at a given time. The wavelengths are very short, um, and we have high frequency, more waves in a unit of time. So there are some basic formulas we can use in working with waves, and one of the beginning formulas is the velocity of a wave formula. And velocity, of course, is the speed that the wave is traveling at. And for our purposes, we're going to deal with velocity in meters per second. 
Then this uh, funny upside down Y is actually the Greek letter lambda, and lambda is for wavelength, which is the distance from crest to crest, as we just spoke about. And then you have the frequency of the waves, which is how often the wave passes that given point, and that is measured in a thing called hertz, and hertz is actually a measure of waves per second, waves per second. So how many waves are passing a given point in a second? But when we talk about light, we have to understand that light actually moves at a constant. So we're going to replace the V with C, and it's the same C that we deal with in E equals MC squared that we've all heard of from Mr. Einstein. And that C is a measurement of 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Now 10 to the 8th will give us 300 million, 300 million meters per second and that is the speed of light. So for our purposes, since we're dealing with the visible spectrum of light, we're dealing with white light, and that white light will travel at a constant of 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, so C equals lambda F. C velocity equals lambda wavelength times F frequency. So here again we have a comparison of wavelength to the visible spectrum and what we need to understand is that each type of color or each color gives off a wave that has a different wavelength okay higher frequency waves are on the purple end or the indigo end and that would be closer to the UV light and lower frequency uh, waves are on the red spectrum and that would be closer to the infrared and right in the middle is the blue green and what we have to understand is these values 400 500 600 are measured in nanometers now a nano is 10 to the negative ninth so 400 and 20, 400 to 420 nanometers for violet light, 620 to 780 nanometers for red light. So we also have a second equation, which is the energy of a wave. So this would be the energy given off by that light. And that is measured with the equation E equals HF, where E is energy measured in joules. And then H is Planck's constant, and Planck's constant lets us convert from the wave values, hertz and frequency, um, to energy in joules per second. So in this case, Planck's constant, and always Planck's constant being a constant, is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. And then our frequency again is measured in hertz. So can you calculate the light energy of a flame? So this goes back to the flame test that we did in class. And we saw that different ions, different cations, give off different values of color based on uh, the salt that is involved and the energy provided by the flame. So here we have a red flame. Actually, it's kind of a red-orange flame. So we're going to actually say that this has a wavelength of 700 nanometers. So we're going to go with this area right here on the spectrum comparing to the red color of the flame and lithium burns at this wavelength which is about 700 nanometers. Now because it's 700 nanometers which is 10 to the negative ninth we're going to move the decimal 2 to the left and make this 7.0 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So we're going to convert nanometers to meters by making it 7.0 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. So now we have our speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. We know this because it is a constant, and we're dealing with white light, the light we see here on our Earth. And we are dealing with a wavelength of 7.00 times 10 to the negative 7th meters, and we are searching for the frequency. So in this case, we have C equals lambda F. And when we do the algebra, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th divided by 7.00 times 10 to the negative 7th meters, we are dealing with a frequency of 4.28 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So now we have our waves per second, our frequency of the wave. 
So now what we can do is take that frequency and plug it into the equation E equals HF, where frequency is 4.28 times 10 to the 14th hertz. We have Planck's constant being a constant. It's always the same at 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And in this case, when we multiply that out, we end up with an energy value of 2.84 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. 2.84 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So this is the energy created by that red light that we just saw in the flame, and that is the energy of that light. That is the energy value given to that sample of salt that we were burning in that flame. So here we have a green flame produced by copper. So what we're going to do is have you match that up. And what we would like you to do is uh, go ahead and calculate the energy produced by this copper flame. I'm going to ask you to turn off the video now, work out that problem, and then come back and see how you did, and I'll go through the solution with you. So once again, turn off the video now and figure out the energy produced by this copper flame. So let's see how you did. So here we have the ener the speed of light, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th. Um, I decided that the uh, wavelength is 5.2 times 10 to the negative 7th. If you're at 500 or you went to 540, we're not going to quibble with that. We're basically going to come into the same range. So as long as you're in that 5 range, um, we are okay. You do the algebra and get the 3.0 times 10 to the 8th divided by 5.20 times 10 to the negative 7th. That gives us a frequency of 5.77 times 10 to the 14th hertz, which we then multiply by Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th, and we end up with an energy of 3.82 times 10 to the ne negative 19th joules. Now, in your SOFIA, there is a PDF that you can practice a couple more of these problems, and then we will, again, discuss this in class. So, hopefully this is going to give you a nice basis for the use of these two equations in studying the atomic spectra or the energy of light. Now, one other thing. What we have to understand is what happens is when we put that salt in the flame, what we're actually doing is adding enough energy to the salt to cause the electrons in the shells, the orbitals, to start jumping up an orbital with that extra energy. And as they jump up an energy level, they actually then reach a certain energy level and then they start to cool down. So the energy absorbed by the electron makes it jump, but as it cools down, it actually gives off light. And as it gives off light, that is what we see. And that's the color we see is the level of light waves coming off of the cooling electron as it slows back down and loses energy. So the heat from the flame causes the electrons to jump up an orbital, jump up an energy level. And as the electrons cool, they slow back down, giving off energy, and the, light, the energy they give off is actually light that we see as color. So this is actually what's happening when we add that extra energy from the flame to the salt. We are causing electrons to leap with energy, and as they cool back down, they send off light that we see. So hopefully this was helpful, and keep working on your chemistry.